What's up, everybody? It's been a while, but we are back playing Tom Clancy's The Division. Been waiting for a while for this uh, 1.4 patch, and even got a chance to go out to Sweden to meet with all the developers as part of the Elite Task Force and help them make The Division great again. Um, so we, there was, a, I think, 13 of us that all had some uh, good input and trying to make this patch really fix the core the core mechanics of the game because there was some stuff that was just <clears throat> fundamentally flawed and if you haven't checked out the 1.4 patch notes they're extensive it took me like an hour to read through them i'm going to go over some of the stuff that i think is pretty important and really game changing but feel free to go read through them all and hopefully we'll see you in the dark zone or playing the division again the pve content is the priority focus from patch 1.4 and it's just changed all sorts of things the biggest thing is the new feature called world tiers so the problem that i ran into with the division is once you reach level 30 uh, i'd say like 99 percent of the game is never replayed all the missions are are not rewarding they're not challenging there's all these areas in the maps that you never go to and whatnot but now when you reach level 30 there's a world tier that you set in the base of operations um, four of them. So if you set your tier to four, all the enemies are going to be level 33s, which is the new max level. Um, and your gear score for all items is going to be 229, which is the, the max still. Now, if that's too difficult for you, you can drop it down. And all the gear you find will always be 204 or 229 um, corresponding to your, your tier. So now you can go replay all those old missions that used to drop really crappy uh, gear score items and get the highest gear score there is. Um, now what they changed in the difficulty is normal, hard, and challenging will affect how much rewards you actually get. So doing a mission on hard will still give you high gear score items if you do it on tier 4, but doing it on challenging will get you more items. And that's really nice. They also made it so any NPC um, regardless if it's a named boss or whatever, can drop high-end items. So that's really cool. There's <clears throat> been quite a bit of UI improvements. Um, you can now mark weapons and gears as favorites, and it locks them in your inventory. You can't, be s s you can't sell them, you can't share them, you can't dismantle them. So that's really cool. Plus, they added a buyback option. So if you accidentally do sell something, real, real nice there. Weapon skins no longer take inventory space. That's pretty important, if you ask me. Um, I know I like to collect weapon skins, and this is nice. Uh, all sorts of other things, and this is another one that stood out, was players now have an option to find a better server if they're currently on one that is not their best option. They can do that from the group management menu, and you can basically, if you're running around and the connection to the server is bad, you can click a button and it'll find you a new server. You don't have to log out and log back in. So that's pretty cool. Um, some big gameplay changes. One of the biggest ones I'd say is incendiary and explosive rounds no longer apply status effects. You no longer stagger from explosives and you no longer get set on fire from incendiary. Um, what they do now is just convert a portion of your damage into exotic damage. Um, which is pretty cool. I mean, in PvP, incendiary and explosive rounds were really just, in my opinion, game-breaking, ruining, um ruining things they were just too overpowered and too overused especially with that reclaimer set which probably won't see much anymore um accuracy will be lowered for a short time after doing a combat roll that's kind of cool for people that just used to combat roll around and have perfect accuracy right after so that's a nice little change for for pvp completely removed scavenging from the game uh if you had if you had um, that stat on gear pieces, I think it's just disappeared now. And I don't think it replaced with anything I haven't seen yet. Maybe it did, but uh, no longer going to have any scavenging in the game. This is kind of cool, especially in PvE, is uh, grenade damage skill scales with the world tier. So your grenades will actually be able to deal some good damage to the NPCs. And they also nerf shotguns again, as far as NPC shotguns. We'll see how that works. Uh, player health now will regenerate to full when out of combat. It takes a while, but rather than only filling up one bar, it can fill all your bars. 
there's been some massive changes to healing, um, the effectiveness of heals. You can no longer walk in and out of your first aids. First aid no longer cleanses status effects. Um, so first aid uh, is no longer like it used to be. Triage no longer works the way it used to because you can't walk into first aid more than once. First aid is a single heal now. Um, let's see here. Global changes. All NPCs now have the chance to drop the high-end and gear set items, and the tougher enemies have higher chances to drop them. They removed gear set waiting from all activities except incursions, uh, and any gear set can now drop from any activity. That's really cool. I like that. Um, I don't remember where I saw it. I don't think I highlighted it, but what they changed for the waiting in incursions is no longer... Like, say, f um, Falcon Lost used to be heavily weighted for strikers and sentries um but instead of that falcon lost is gloves and masks i believe they can drop any set piece but the slot is determined by the incursion now so depending on which incursion you do you will be able to farm for your chest or your masks or your knee pads whatever you're whatever you're missing really cool change i like that um they added a new thing called field proficiency it's basically a new experience bar and when you fill it, you get a loot cache. So that's kind of cool. Um, vendors now sell sealed caches for all currency. I'm not exactly sure what the price is on that. I haven't loaded the game up yet, but that's pretty cool. If you had a ton of currency, you can spend it on sealed caches now. Um, Division tech has been removed as a requirement from high-end and gear set blueprints. Not exactly sure why they did that, but I guess they're moving away from Division tech. Um, let's see here. There's all sorts of other changes. Here's, here's one about main missions on loot, is the, the difference in, like, hard mode, normal mode, and challenging mode, where if they're all in tier 4, they're all going to drop the highest gear score, but the difference of, say, normal mode and challenge, normal mode, the boss will only drop one superior or high end. And let's, let's look at hard. The boss will drop one high end, the reward will be one high end. Now, if you do that same mission in challenge mode, the boss will drop a high end, a gear set, and a high end mod. So three items there. Plus, your reward will give you two high ends or gear sets, depending on what, what you get, and 30 Phoenix credits. So that's pretty, that's pretty big. That's five items instead of two items for doing it on challenge mode. I, I really like this change. They also did the same kind of stuff for search and destroy, the high value targets. You can check out all the, the drop rates there. Huge, huge changes to um to loot like the weekly high risk target is a gear set a high end or a gear set a mod two gear set pieces for the reward a high end high end weapon a bunch of phoenix credits so the hvts are going to be nice to farm it's definitely going to be worth farming those now and they probably won't just drop you lone star all the time like they used to um underground doing the same thing which is uh, pretty cool. Oh, and here's where I was talking about um, the incursions. Falcon Lost now has additional checkpoints after each C4 explosion. The fourth horseman farm, um, where you used to be able to stand in cover and not get any damage from the RC cars, that's been fixed. Can no longer do that. And um, here's where they change the gear weighting. Falcon Lost is gloves and masks. Clear Sky is body armor and holster. Dragon's Nest is backpack and knee pads. So that's pretty cool. I, I really like that change a lot. Um, and they upgraded the rewards for doing the incursions. Um, so if you do it in challenge mode, you'll get two weapons or gear set. Um, one guaranteed weapon. So you could actually end up getting three weapons there. A high-end mod, chance for a named weapon, Phoenix credits, and then the reward is two high-end or gear set pieces. That's a lot of fucking loot. <laughs> Um, heroic mode is now going to be two high-ends or gear sets, a high-end weapon, a gear set, a high-end mod, chance for a named weapon, plus your reward is going to be two more gear set pieces, another high-end weapon piece, and another high-end or gear set piece. So let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You can get 12 items <laughs> dropped from heroic mode incursions. That's nice, because these can take a while, but... um. That's, that's a real nice change right there for lots of loot. The Dark Zone also drops a lot more now. Supply drops give you a high-end or gear set.
plus a gear set guaranteed and a high-end mod. Real nice. Um, and boss drops will always drop two like they've been doing. I think they always drop two. Maybe they always dropped one. I forget. I haven't played for a while. Um, gear stats, there's a lot of changes in here. Can't really cover all of them. But um, they removed skill bonuses from all gear items. Said backpack, holster, and knee pads have additional slots that are dedicated to performance mod slots. You can only put performance mods in them. Two of them in the backpack, one in the holster, and one in the knee pads. Um, this change is not retroactive, and what I've heard is that the old skills that were on your old piece have been nerfed, so they're not nearly as high of a number. This is a pretty cool change, because now, um, just because a backpack didn't have the skill that you wanted on it, it's not garbage anymore. Um, so now you can just collect your performance mods and tune them or tune your pieces of gear to whatever you want rather than say having three different backpacks for different skills you can now just have one backpack and change your performance mods for the skills really good change um, one of the better changes I think they did and can't wait to to do that performance mods are going to be very important so st start saving them or crafting them because you will need them if you want to max your gear out now, um, let's see here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. They reduce the range of additional bonuses, like crit chance and headshot damage. All the damage bonuses in the game have been severely nerfed. The time to kills have been increased on NPCs. Um, it's, a overall, it's an overall overhaul. So a lot of people are going to feel like they're a lot weaker, but you got to realize all the enemies are also a lot weaker. Um, so there's not so much damage modifiers out there anymore. And if there is, they're much smaller numbers. Now, um, armor has also been overhauled. Your armor value has a different max mitigation, um, depending on which world tier you're in. And the cap is now 70%. And reaching that cap is going to require much more armor. Um, basically, what, it, what, what they did, this is one thing that I'm not the happiest about, is... They made armor cap really hard to reach, and getting it, because of the way armor multiplies, um, is better the more you have. So the difference of, say, having 50% and 55% is not nearly the same difference of, say, 65% and 70%. That, ever, that last 5% from 65 to 70 is a huge, huge damage reduction. So reaching armor is going to be very, very important. And what it's done is made almost every single gear slot, if not every single gear slot, that can roll armor. Pretty much mandatory to roll armor. And which kind of kills build diversity as far as what you want to roll on things. It, it, I, I feel that it's not, not the greatest approach and maybe they'll be changing it in the future because no one wants to be, um, I don't know, forced to roll armor on every single piece, at least I don't. I liked it the old way where you could reach armor cap much easier. Um, still had to pay a little bit of attention to it, but you had the ability to spec into other things other than armor. We'll see how that goes. Um, toughness, the readout now takes all damage resilience into account, which is nice. Um, what else do we have here? There was a huge global rebalance on gear talents. You'll have to read through these. There's so many changes. Um, it would take me a long time to go through everything. But uh, like say Savage Gloves, for instance. Crit chance is now 7% against targets out of cover instead of 15%. So a lot of things got nerfed hard. And I know some people will be upset about it, but you got to realize that everything has been rebalanced and you no longer are going to need so much crit chance or headshot damage or crit damage. Um, and what this has helped done is bring lots of different weapons, um, armor pieces, sets, all in line with each other. So there's not necessarily one that just deals so much more damage than the others like sentries used to. Um, they nerfed chain reaction, which is nice. The damage bonus um, went from 40% to 20%, so BFBers are not going to be so strong in the dark zone when they hit you with stuff like that. Um, what else here? We've got all sorts of other changes. You're going you're gonna to have to check them out if you're curious about all the changes. Pulse got, got nerfed pretty good. Um, 
crit chance is much lower, crit damage is much lower. The tactical scanner bonus went from 25% uh, to 8%. So there's some huge changes to, huge changes to pulse. Uh, what else here? This is a cool change with support station when playing solo. If you're down when the station is active, you can revive yourself on it. That's a real nice change. Um, let's see here. There's so many. You're just if you're if you're curious about all these ones, I'm skipping. Check out these patch notes and go over them yourselves. Smart cover, huge change. Um, the cooldown will now begin when smart cover is destroyed. No longer can permanently have smart cover up. The uh, Damage resistance has been decreased from 20% to 7% on the base. That's a huge, huge nerf to the damage resistance. Um, and there's no more damage bonus on, on smart cover. It now adds stability and accuracy. So we'll, we'll have to see how that works. I was a huge smart cover user. I always had smart cover in my build and tried to make it maxed out on both damage and damage reduction which is probably not going to happen anymore, and we'll see how that goes. Um, all sorts of different changes. Let's see what else we got here. Here's a big one. Signature skills. They've implemented a shared cooldown mechanic. So when you're in a group, you receive a buff from any signature skill. You'll be immune to the same signature skill for 30 seconds after the first one runs out. You can no longer chain together your signature skills. Um... You can, but they have to be different ones. So if you, say, do um, Survivor Link, you can't chain four of them back to back and stay in Survivor Link for, for permanent or what, for however long each one does. They, uh, they really buffed Recovery Link. Um, it will actually revive teammates from dead state, like fully dead, not just down state. So if you get knocked out, you can use Recovery Link to pull them, pull them from the dead huge change to that that's that's really big um it'll also automatically revive you in solo play if you get killed and have it have it filled up and ready to use it'll it'll bring you back to life uh it also increased the range from 40 meters to 50 meters it's also going to heal you for 50 percent of your total health and um it gives you a bunch of health over over time um for 12 seconds and it's pretty nice Huge change to, to Recovery Link, I like that. Now, Tactical Link got um, changed quite a bit, and some people might think it's a nerf, but I think it's actually a buff. They removed the critical hit chance bonus, um, and they decreased the bonus damage from 50 to 30, but they increased the RPMs and the reload speed and the stability. 50% RPM, 50% reload speed, and 30% weapon stability. So it probably is going to be actually a damage decrease, um, but it's going to be huge damage increase on time to kills and things because of your RPM. So I don't know. This will be interesting to, to use and see. I know crit chance used to not affect my builds because I was already at max crit chance. So the, the added crit chance in tackling didn't ever do anything. So for me, if, if I was still running that same build with maxed crit, which I might not be able to anymore, it would be a 20%... Um, 20% damage bonus drop, but 50% rate of fire. That's huge. And reload speed and better stability. Survivor Link <clears throat> dropped the damage resistance from 80 to 50%. Um, they decreased the duration from 15 seconds to 12 seconds. And they increased the range to 30 meters from 25 meters. That's pretty, pretty good change to this. It's no longer going to make you as tanky. Um, I think that was a needed change. All sorts of weapon changes. Um, what, what do we got here? Here's a big one. Weapon recalibration. When you recalibrate a weapon, you'll be able to choose from six talents plus the one instead of three talents plus the one. Um, to get what you want, it's going to be a lot easier now. That's nice. And let's see here. Weapon mods have been changed pretty drastically. They now have one major bonus and um, two, two smaller bonuses. Uh, so you'll see three, on, on high-end mods, you'll see uh, three, three bonuses on them instead of two. Some of the stats on the weapon mods have been merged into one. Horizontal stability and initial bullet stability are now merged with stability. And hipfire accuracy is now merged with accuracy. Uh, 
all the damage bonuses are now additive instead of multiplicative, which really, really nerfed, uh, like, bonus damage magazines and stuff like that. Uh, weapon talents have been rebalanced. Huge nerfs and changes to um, weapon talents. Accurate is now uh, actually better. Improved by 25%. Um, actually, no. This is not. This is worse. I'm tripping. This is a 50% nerf. Uh, 20 to 50% was based on gear score, so a high gear score weapon used to be 50% accuracy. This is actually 25% accuracy now, so accurate got nerfed real hard. All sorts of things. Pretty much everything got cut in half, it seems. Brutal is 12% instead of 25%. Um, capable improves your handling. Um, let's see here. Seconds are the same. Handling is improved by 25% instead of 20 to 50, so that also got a 50% nerf. It'll be interesting to see what, what capable is like on the M1As now. Uh, let's see. Um, Cool-headed reduces by 5% instead of 7.5%, and they removed cool-headed from the Caduceus, so that kind of sucks for the Caduceus build. Um, all sorts of changes. Fierce is now 5% crit chance instead of 10, and... Um, yeah, pretty much all the damage dealing things got uh, got got nerfed. But keep in mind, don't get upset about these nerfs because these are um, really to balance the overall game, um, and it's going to be a completely different experience, I think, for for most people. And don't don't get turned off by seeing all these nerfs because you got to realize that they had to do this in order to bring the NPCs in line um, with you. It, it had been broken because they couldn't increase difficulty anymore because NPCs just kept getting more health and more damage and one-shotting you unless you're in smart cover. And it would take 50 billion shots to kill them. So doing all this has made it much much more balanced. You can kill things you, that you don't feel like the difference between you and them is, is so massive anymore. Um, and in PvP... There's still going to be a lot of tuning to PvP. This patch was not focused on PvP. The next patch will be. And, um, but from what I've heard, I, I didn't really get to experience this on the PTR. Um, but what I've heard is the PvP is still a lot better than it used to be. It's not perfect by all means and has got a long ways to go still. But this is laying the groundwork for all the tuning to the PvP. A bunch of guns have been changed, um, nerfed or buffed. Uh, damage to out of cover targets on LMGs was reduced a little bit. Huge damage increase to the M60, 19% damage increase. M249, uh, 17%. Um, huge nerf to the MP7, 27%. People that used to say Vector was better than MP7, well, I don't think the devs agreed because the Vector got nerfed by 13.8. But the MP7 got nerfed by 27.6. All, all submachine guns got nerfed. Um, SMG9, which was, I thought, the worst, got nerfed the, worst, er, the least. And the others are all about the 13 percentage. AUG didn't get hit too hard, though, 10%. Um, shotguns got their damage decreased by 30%. Um, that's good. They were a little bit overpowered. Marksman rifles, huge changes here. M1A, damage decreased by 35%. The SCAR, the SRS, the M44, all had, had their damages increased. This was huge, huge needed. Um, the M1A was just so much better than every other marksman rifle. It's still probably going to be a good marksman rifle, but the bolt actions might be the better option now if you're trying to get one-shot kills. Like, SRS by 20% increase, that's awesome. I'm glad I have some sick SRSs. And the SCAR might actually be good, good to use now. I don't know. It's a 23% damage increase on that um, large magazine marksman rifle. So we'll see how that works. Pistols got a pretty big change. X45 was extremely broken as far as all the other pistols. Decreased by 40%. You can see how badly balanced the pistols were. PX4 got increased by 25%. That's pretty huge as well. Um, gear set scores have been changed. They're no longer higher than high ends. So 268 gear set items are now 229. So the difference of wearing a high end and a, a gear set is not going to change your, your overall gear score. Um, they removed the five piece bonus on strikers and sentries and 
put them back um, to four-piece bonuses. A lot of the sets have been changed, some of them pretty drastically, and had damage modifiers removed from them completely or changed or nerfed. Strikers now gives you 20% stability instead of crit damage. It still has 10% enemy armor damage, and the four-piece stayed the same. Some changes to attack, the way it works. Um, it's now based on bullets, and you're limited in how long it stays buffed up, so it's going to change the way attack is played. Um, I can't go through all of these in this video, but if you're curious on all the changes, make sure you check out the notes and get some in-depth reading here. Um, Sentry's Call, 30% aiming accuracy for the two-piece. The three-piece is now 10% headshot damage, and the four-piece has been nerfed pretty big here. Um, I know they tried to do some other changes to this, which I thought they were going to do, but it ended up being uh, technically um, impossible for them with their current, current whatever they got going on. So it is um, still markable by three times, but only 5% increase in damage. So it used to be 15% each mark. Um, now it's 5% each mark. So rather than um, getting, you know, three marks doing 45, which was actually like 51% because of, uh, or 50-something percent because of them multiplying off of each other, you're now going to only be doing um, a lot less than that. Still might be a nice set, but I don't know. It, it seems like they really hit that one hard. Uh, let's see, we got reload speed on Predator's mark now. Um, pretty much the same, I believe, elsewhere here. But they changed it to have SMG damage. Predator's Mark now has Assault Rifle and SMG damage. I don't think it used to have SMG damage. I remember it having Assault Rifle, but um, that's pretty cool. Predator's is probably going to be a pretty good set in PvP, especially now that um, Bleed is not cured by, by self-heal. It's a pretty big change right there. Predator's Mark is probably going to become a lot more popular. Made changes to Final Measures. Um, Hunter's Faith, I think. A big one here, Deadeye. The four-piece bonus to Deadeye used to be when you weren't zoomed, you lost your headshot bonus, but you gained 100% crit chance. Now it's the opposite. When zoomed, you lose the headshot bonus, but you gain 100% crit chance. This set could be really good, I think, especially now with the nerfs and headshot damages and multiplicative uh, bonuses and whatnot. Um, this set seems like it could be really nice. And another thing is that if you use an, uh, an ACOG, or not an ACOG, a... Uh, a red dot when you zoom all the way in it's just it changes your sensitivity unfortunately but it's not like a huge zoom at all it's basically none and you'll be getting 100 percent crit chance with that so we'll see how dead eye works this is probably going to be a really good set in pvp um especially if you're used to aiming down sights and zooming in uh the blind set has now become the banshee set and it's pretty cool it went from being one of the worst sets in the world that no one ever wore blind to Banshee, which is going to be real good for PvP, I think. Two pieces give you a 20% Dark Zone currency gain. Three pieces is 10% damage to targets out of cover. And four pieces, when you're rogue, all ammo is completely refilled every 30 seconds. Um, damage taken from non-rogue players is reduced by 10%. Um, so that's pretty cool. When you're rogue, you're going to be um, doing 10% more damage to targets of, out of cover. And... Um, you're going to be reduced um, damage from non-rogue players. Another thing is that Dark Zone XP and currency is not lost on death, and damage to rogue players is increased by 10%. So if they're rogue and you're rogue, you're going to be... Um, actually, no. If they're rogue and they're out of cover, you're going to be doing 20% bonus damage to them. If they're non-rogue, you're going to be taking less damage to them. And if they are rogue, 10% more. It's a pretty cool set. I like it. it uh, it's, it's interesting. Firecrest was changed. Uh, you get three incendiary grenades with two pieces. Three pieces is now flame turret damage and flame turret range. Flame turret also got buffed um, pretty dramatically in its health. So this is now a flame turret set. And the four-piece bonus is something that I actually, uh, I invented this set bonus when I was at the Elite Task Force. I'm really glad to see that it made it into the game. And this right here shows to me that when we went to the Elite Task Force, the developers actually took what we said, our ideas, our input, and directly implemented it into the game. When we o went over this set here, um, the four-piece bonus that I had read was not something that I thought was really adequate or cool so I suggested something like this 
Um, now that you can't light things on fire with bullets, I don't think this is going to be a problem, but damage to targets on fire is now increased by everyone who's shooting at it um, by 15%. So that's really cool, and this could be a sweet set to have multiple people running. Uh, I think it's going to be a pretty awesome set. I'd love to see three or four fire crests in a build, just flame turrets everywhere, lighting things on fire. It's going to be awesome. Um, Alpha Bridge uh, has some weapon damage, health regen speed, Reclaimers got nerfed pretty hard. Uh, now when you use a consumable, everyone gets that consumable on, um, on cooldown, and if you have multiple Reclaimers, you can no longer stack a bunch of uh, consumables, so it's pretty much a useless set in my opinion now. And a ton of bugs being fixed. If you look at all the bugs, there's been a lot of them. I'm not going to cover the bugs, but you guys can go check out these these patch notes, I'll have a link in the info section of this video, and I'm excited to play this again. Unfortunately, it's came at a time that is not the greatest for us at Streamer House because of all these other games that are coming out. Even if we don't play these other games for a long time, they are going to interrupt uh, playing this game. So, um, I don't know how much we're going to be playing. I know when Survival comes out, we will be playing that a lot um, because it's coming out in like December when there's not a bunch of other games that are going to interrupt it. And, yeah, I hope to see you guys in the dark zone or in the stream. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't. It's free. You can always subscribe to us on Twitch or use your Twitch Prime if you haven't done that already. Really cool thing that they just implemented. If you have Amazon Prime, you now have Twitch Prime, and you get a free sub with it. So thanks for the support, guys, and thanks for watching the video. I'll see you guys around.